Hey, MD. Uh, what's up? It's Dorian Yates here from Temple Gym in uh, Birmingham. And um, yeah, I was just talking to uh, Robbie about the round table that was recently held and uh, some of the rumours back in the day about the bodybuilders. Um, I probably had more than my uh, fair share. Of course, it was before we had the internet, so um, most of the rumours were around for a long time and it was had people calling me up. I probably died, uh, I had more lives than a cat for sure, because I died about nine times. Seriously, I had people calling up the gym. I had a couple of guys crying on the phone with the bad news of my demise, but uh, the guy in the gym let them know that uh, I was training legs at the time, so I probably was still okay, you know? Yeah, one, one, of, the, one of the really widespread uh, popular rumors was, uh, because I had a habit, I used to train late morning, go home, have my lunch, and every afternoon, uh, I would go and have a nap, it was religious, every afternoon, two hours nap, so I'd disappear, nobody would uh, hear from me. And uh, so the rumor started that somehow um, I was having ast afternoon dialysis every day for a couple of hours. I'm not really sure how that works, but anyway, that, that rumor stayed around for a long time. And uh, then one very widespread rumor, again, I don't really understand how this is supposed to work, but anyway, apparently I took out some of my blood at night before I went to sleep mixed it with some growth hormone, put it back in the fridge, and then in the morning uh, inject it all back in. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure how that would supposed to work, but uh, it was a pretty persistent rumor. Of course, they're all false rumors, but uh, it's kind of entertaining. And then uh, the other one that's a little bit more disturbing is the uh, supposed steroid cycle, Dorian Yates cycle that I've seen on the internet. and. Um, now, the thing about that is, unfortunately, some people might take it seriously. Uh, the amount of uh, stuff that's on there is probably last a pro bodybuilder for the whole year, and it's, it's down for a week. And uh, half the things on there, I don't even know what they are. I've never even heard of them, so it's definitely not the Dorian Yates course, so please don't follow it. Another thing I noticed on the round table, the guys are talking about the psychology and mind games and stuff like that, and apparently Sean got to a few people, but um, I couldn't really say that anyone got to me because um, it, wasn't really, uh, it wasn't really a plan on my part, it's more like my personality, but um, I chose to stay kind of secluded most of the year. Uh, even in the gym, the guys in my own gym wouldn't see me, I'd be always covered up, I'm not interested in showing off in the gym, I know what I'm doing, I know what I've, uh, I'm aiming to achieve, so I'm always covered up in the gym. Plus, I was in England most of the time, so the guys couldn't see me day in, day out. They can see each other in Gold's gym or whatever gym's out in California. You know, hey, Flex is looking big, Sean's looking smooth, whatever. They didn't see me all year round, and I guess posed quite infrequently. Um, I guess posing were very, very popular because I didn't pose every weekend, so it was somewhat inaccessible. Um, so all year round, I know the guys were thinking about me. You know, what's Dorian doing? What's he looking like? This is playing on their mind, and when I turn up at the contest, uh, of course, then I've got the goods, so it's uh, it's game over. I can't really say that anyone had any kind of effect on me. Sean probably irritated me a little bit, which just gave me extra motivation. So thanks for that, buddy. Um, but yeah, nobody nobody could really uh, penetrate me mentally. It's not possible. Yeah, another thing I used to do is that uh, at a contest, um, I would purposely keep covered up until the last minute. Um, I remember my first. Uh, Mr. Olympia experience backstage, and I was there near to Lee Haney, and you know he was pumping up and everything. Had his tracksuit on, and like at the last minute, he took his track top off, and his back was to me, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's some thick back," you know. Um, so I always remembered that, and uh, I made a point. I knew everyone was waiting to see what I looked like. They hadn't seen me all year, so they're all waiting. It's all in their mind, you know. They're anticipating, which is taking away their energy. Um, so I'd leave it to the last minute to take off my clothes. Pretty much, I, I would stay in a private room. Even when we weren't supposed to have private rooms, it upset Sean a lot that I used to take my private room, but hey, he was thinking about me, it wasn't bothering me, so yeah, there's a little mind games there, I guess, but ultimately, you turn up with the goods, you know, it doesn't matter about all the bullshit that's said all year round, uh, ultimately it's like, you got to come with the goods on stage, so that's what I tried to do. And um, yeah, I had a couple of injuries, 94, um, I had a partial biceps tear, and coming into the 97, Mr. Olympia had a tricep tendon tear. And, um, you know, there's always questions about how can a guy win a contest, how can it be Mr. Olympia with, you know, some imperfection like a, a muscle tear. Um, but I, I answer that is like, 
you know, let's look at how the contest is judged. And I don't make the rules. I don't judge the contest. The contest is judged on uh, four quarter turns and seven compulsory poses. Basically, this is simple mathematics. So. Let's uh, let's take the compulsory poses. Uh, Dorian's got a torn left bicep, which is visible in the front double bicep. So, let's say that everybody in the contest beats Dorian on that pose. Everybody, for argument's sake, Sean Ray, everybody, everybody beats me on that pose. But there's six other poses. Can somebody beat me on a front lat spread? I, I don't think so. Um, back double bicep, back lat spread, side tricep. No, no way. Uh, abs and thighs. Very few people can come close. So, and the four quarter turns from the relaxer on the front wasn't my strongest pose, but from the side nobody had my thickness. So, everybody loses from the side. Everyone loses from the back, of course. So, it's simple mathematics. Out of 11 poses, I'll probably beat everyone at, on eight or nine. So, even if I get beaten on the front double bicep, uh, mathematically, I still win a contest. So. I don't make the rules, guys. Sorry. Yeah, and the final rumor um, I've heard as well is that my uh, blood and guts training uh, approach, philosophy, DVD, book, and all that kind of stuff was some kind of marketing ploy where uh, he doesn't really train like that. That's just, you know, it's just a marketing thing to, to do something different. Really, he goes somewhere else and does some extra training, extra sets, and extra reps. Well, I can uh, guarantee you. If you come and train for me for 45 minutes, you wouldn't be going anywhere else doing any extra sets or extra reps. You wouldn't be able to. So uh, absolutely the training that you see on Blood and Guts uh, DVD, that's how I trained every day, day in, day out. That wasn't anything special for the cameras. Uh, it wasn't like, let's train harder today for the cameras. That was how I lived. That's how I trained every day, day in, day out for 12, 15 years. Uh, probably, most of you probably know uh, I had a few uh, long-term injuries from, uh, from my training career. And, um, you know, people ask me, would I, would I do anything uh, different if I did it over again? Um, probably I would uh, be a little bit more careful with my training as far as uh, the poundages and the intensity coming up to a contest because you're, you're more vulnerable then to injury and actually, you know, you're not taking enough calories to build any muscle. So there's no really real point to be doing force reps and negatives, all that kind of extra stuff. So I'd probably be a little bit more careful coming into a contest as far as uh, the injury risk. Both the serious injuries I had was in the last six weeks before a contest. Um, so now I advise people, you know, back off of the intensity a little bit the last six to eight weeks before the contest and just try to maintain. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, uh, would I change everything completely? Absolutely not, you know. The, whenever you're pushing your body to the limit in, in any sport, I think there's always a, a risk of injury because you're, you're flirting with danger when, you, when you're pushing things to the limit. Um, but, you know, that got me from, uh, from being here. Uh, a backstreet gym in Birmingham, which is, you know, everyone knows it now, but back in the day it was just a hole in the wall gym. Not many people understood bodybuilding in my town. So to come from this place to win Mr. Olympia using a unique training philosophy, which I think uh, catapulted me past people with better genetics, then I can't say that, you know, I would absolutely change it. I think if I trained conventional bodybuilding wise, I would have been a good bodybuilder because I've got good genetics, but I don't think I would be Mr. Olympia. So something that gets you that far, it's very hard to change it, but a slight um, variation coming into the contest, I think that's the only thing I would change. All right, so, uh, yeah, I'm still training three or four times a week uh, when I can. Obviously, I'm very big with, uh, busy with my company now, DIY Nutrition, which is, is totally my company. I'm involved in every, every aspect, so I'm very busy with that. I'm traveling around, just come back from Australia. Um, so my goal is to get into the gym three or four times a week, do a little cardio, do some weights. I have to train around some of the injuries and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it kind of pisses me off that the guys online, oh, look at the guys now, Dorian and Flex and Sean. They're not like they used to be. Well, of course we're not. You know, we, we don't have that goal now to train for Mr. Olympia, uh, and neither is it practical. You're getting older to try and maintain that kind of body weight. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I've heard, oh, the guys are all washed up, they're 200 pounds, Dorian's 210 pounds or 220 or something like that. Well, you know, I'm here with Robbie with the camera, and uh, we're just going to stand on the scales so we can put a uh, stop to that rumor. Sid, how did you change this to pounds? Can't change that to pounds. It's only kilograms, then it gives you pounds here, anyways. Yeah. All right.
So that's uh, 121 kilos. That's, uh, I don't know, it's like 265, 265 to 270, somewhere like that. And that's everyday weight. Nothing in my pockets. My cock's a bit heavy though. You know, 10 pounds of cock here, you can't see that. <laughs> All right, so I'd like to uh, thank Steve Blackman at MD and thank all the readers and the viewers for all the support I've got and uh, the feedback on, on my column and everything. And, um, you know, keep up uh, with the news, www.dorianyatesnutrition.com, all the news on the new products. Uh, we've got a brand new product coming out this month uh, called GH Blast, which is totally unique, uh, nighttime growth uh, formula. Uh, it's clinically proven to increase your growth hormone and really enhance the quality of your sleep, deeper sleep into REM sleep, um, which is uh, an area I don't think has been addressed before uh, by a supplement company. Uh, we all know that sleep, um, rest is very important for your recovery and your growth. And finally, we've got a product here that really, really improves the quality of your sleep. And the trials that we've done, everybody's going crazy about it. So look out for GH Blast. It's going to be available very soon.